He's a film and television writer and producer, a jazz musician, and a social scenician. I put the social scenician last because mm -hmm. I think the other two identities might be more important or somehow more relevant uh, to your talk. He was the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at the University of Technology, Sydney. And before that, he was at the University of Cardiff, directing the Center for Language and uh, Communication there. Um, his research interests include media discourse, critical discourse analysis, and multimodal communication. I don't think it's an, it would be an exaggeration to say that his book with Kunta Press, Reading Images, the Grammar of Visual Design, revolutionized the field of discourse analysis, um, alerting people to the importance uh, not just of the verbal language, but also of the, um, visual design. Um, his other books include Introducing Social Semiotics and Speech, Music, and Sound, where, in, in which he, he talks, about, um, talks about the semiotics of music. It's a very, very interesting uh, book. So without further ado, uh, please welcome Professor Taylor. Thank you. Semiotic production. There's really only semiotic production. 
interpretation is also setting up for that. So these terms indicate, so uh, we, we had four terms. We had uh, uh, discourse, uh, design, production, and distribution, and these terms indicate, uh, related two things to each other. In the first place, the semiotic activities of designing, producing, and distributing, and the different kinds, but also the different kinds of semiotic resources that are used for each of those things. So discourse, we there, and I will only be brief about it today, we interpreted that in a sort of Foucauldian sense, and also the way that, for example, Norman Fairclub does it, as a construction of some aspect of reality, that then forms a knowledge of the aspect of reality that we can draw on when we have to represent it in some way, in a text or otherwise. So I can't go into the deep, but for example, the music, uh, a discourse that was often musical realized in the, in the 1960s and 70s, was a new discourse, an African-American discourse about Africa that was emerging in, in, in the United States. And I can't, unfortunately, not go into it, it was a discourse that found expression was a way of thinking about Africa, a new way of thinking about Africa. It found expression in many different ways. It found expression in new histories that were written. It found expression in art. It found expression also in music. Then the second thing is that designs, you know, now we come to designs, and designs, we said, are formats or templates, if you like, for embedding discourses in specific social contexts. So uh, here's a musical example, but I'm going to explain this in a little more detail, because in music, uh, the, the blues is such a, is such a temper. For embedding, uh, it's a good example, for embedding the discourse, uh, and the discourse could be a discourse about love, for example, about the sad things that happen in love. You know? And uh, that could be then uh, embedded in a, a blues in, 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 in a particular kind of um, this schema, uh, that at once gives it a communicative purpose and that sets it in a particular current, sets up relations between the participants. And that happens both in the lyrics of the blues and in the music. A communicative purpose, if you, if you look, the lyrics might go, you know, love is just like a faucet, it turns off and on. Love is just like a faucet, it turns off and on. Sometimes when you think it's on, baby, it's turned off. Wrong. So uh, the, the, the schema is the schema is so that's a discourse of love, you know, but the schema is that uh, that you get uh, uh, that, that it is really to convey its purposes to convey a piece of wisdom about life, in which first there's a premise that's repeated repetition, you know, a once, and then it becomes a point. The last line gives you a point about it. Sometimes when you think it's on, baby, and it's turned off, it's gone. Uh, so uh, there's, uh, the music does exactly the same thing. The music does exactly the same thing. It repeats it, and then it makes a point, you know. for a particular kind of interaction that sets it in a social context. That's why, after each phrase, there is a little hole, a little bit of time. And that bit of time is originally for dialogue, for the, uh, for the audience to come in and say, yeah, yeah, that's it. So, and now it comes, yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh. And of course, in a, in a, in a performance, that it's often the uh, that other instrument that does it. But actually, we mainstream it. So, so imitate. And now come. to make a point in the last line and how there has to be a space for 
call and response.